made known. In the dictionary, the mystery is something that is difficult to understand or to explain. But in English, a mystery is something dark, obscure, secret, puzzling. It is inexplicable, even incomprehensible. However, the Greek word mysterion is different. Although still a secret, it is no longer closely guarded, but it is open. More simply, it refers to a truth which up to this point or hitherto was hidden from human knowledge or understanding, but is now disclosed by the revelation of God. It was a mystery or it is a mystery because it was unknown and even unknowable until God revealed it through Jesus Christ. I'm sure we are familiar with the scripture, Colossians 1.27, that says, Christ in me, the hope of glory. That is a mystery. Another one that we have to quote when we are having uh, barriers is 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 53. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the sound of the last trumpet. And so what is this mystery that Paul is referring to here? He's talking about believing Jews and Gentiles together joined into the body of Christ, into one church, no longer separated because through Jesus Christ, the walls that separated them have been demolished. That we may not appreciate in this context. How that was, and it was almost unfathomable for the Jews to imagine. But this is the truth that God is revealing through the apostles. That he chose to call the Gentiles. And you and I are in that class of Gentiles to salvation through Christ Jesus. And that, not by the works of the law, but through the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Who would have imagined that those people who had been in the dark for so long, and who had been so far from the mercies of God, would be reached by divine grace, that they would be brought into his marvelous light, and they would be brought near. I pray that the Spirit of God would give you understanding. And this tells us we should never despair. That somebody is too far to be saved. That somebody is too far gone in sin to be redeemed. Because with divine grace, anything is possible. No one is beyond the reach of God's mercy. The mystery means that the Gentiles have an equal standing. Hallelujah. You know the Jews had gotten a kind of a pride. You know we are the chosen ones. We are God's people. And God chose to choose them first. But God knew at some point the Gentiles would also come. And the mystery now means there is equal standing. Tell your neighbor there is equal standing. Between the Jew and the Gentiles. And both Jews and Gentiles, believing Jews and believing Gentiles, are full partakers of the promises of God. Hallelujah. Full partakers. The Bible says these promises are unsearchable. In other words, we can never get to the bottom of them. We cannot really understand how deep and how rich these promises are. And Paul says, I counted a great honor and a great privilege to be a minister of this gospel. Now, the word minister is not a title of exhortation. It's a title of service. In the Greek literature, the minister referred to like a table waiter who waits and is at the bidding of his customers. 
And Paul said, I was made a minister. Please talk to your neighbor. Tell them, God has made you a minister. Hallelujah. This is not something we do for ourselves. It is God who does it. And he equips us with all the grace and all the graces that we need to perform well in the offices that he has given us. Both ordinary graces and extraordinary graces. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. You can therefore appreciate why Paul was so thankful. And he says, it is a great honor for him, he who was the least of the, of the disciples, to be called to this office. And he says, and also to wonder that I've actually succeeded in it. You know, it's like, oh, me? And I've succeeded? This can only be God. He says this. I want to quote somebody who says this. Sometimes Christians get the crazy idea that God saved them and works in their life because they are somehow such great people. The angels see right through this. We might believe that it is because of us. The angels know better. We may think our lives are small and insignificant. The angels know better. We may doubt our high standing, sitting in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. The angels see this spiritual reality with eyes wide open. For them it is a marvel. What is this, this person saying? That as we take the office of minister seriously, we do not just witness to the unbelievers or to the Gentiles, we also witness to principalities and powers. The angels behold us and they are in mother. Somebody asked, what would angels say of your walk and conversation? And because they are unseen beings, we may be oblivious of their presence, but they watch, they observe. God sends them to come and minister to the saints. Because they see and they hear, what would they say about your work and conversation? May the Lord help us. Because we are witnessing even to principalities and powers. We, the Jews and Gentiles, believers, yes. we have boldness. We have access. We have confidence before God. And why? Because it doesn't depend on our nationality. It doesn't depend on our class of life. It depends on Jesus. Jesus. Let us thank God for Jesus. God for Jesus. Hebrews 4, 16 says, Come boldly to the throne of grace and find your help boldly. Mm. That coming boldly refers to freedom. Mm. We have freedom of speech. We can express ourselves to our Father yes. without fear and without shame. Oh, Lord. There's another angle to this mystery, mm. which actually the reformers spoke about, and that was the separation between clergy and laity, or what people define as those who are called and the common people. And the teaching is of the Bible, 1 Peter 2, 9, is about the priesthood of all believers. Now talk to your neighbor, tell them you have equal access to the throne room of the God. Of God. That is a profound mystery, my brothers. You don't need a pastor, you don't need an apostle, you don't need a bishop. As long as you are a child of God, as long as you have identified with the sacrifice of Jesus, you have as much access as I have. You have as much access as a bishop or an, an archbishop or whatever titles that the ministers of God may be given. Because you yourself are not only a child of God, you are a minister. Tell your neighbor you have equal access. Have equal access. Hallelujah. Then Paul prays and says, 
Be strengthened in your inner man. And by the way, I want you to observe Paul's prayers. He wasn't talking about, oh, more land, more houses, more degrees. Did you see those no. in Paul's prayers? No. <laughs> Paul is talking about who we are as a people of God. Yes. And he says, be strengthened with might. Right. According to the riches of God's glory. Yes. That talks about the expansion of God's riches. So when it comes to strengthen, he strengthens greatly. Mm -hmm. And that strength in the inner man is the best and the most desirable strength. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because it strengthens the soul. Mm -hmm. It strengthens our faith. It gives us the strength to serve God and to do our duty. And it enables us to persevere in our time of trial. Yes. Not only, not through gritted teeth, but with cheerfulness. And he says, you being rooted and grounded in love, you will be able to comprehend with the saints what is the width and what is the length, and what is the depth, and what is the height, the height. of the love of God, of this love, love God. that God. defies knowledge. The love of God. Somebody says, this is how you can measure God's love. It has dimensions, mm. and it can be measured. measured. Hallelujah. Mm. His river of love is so wide that it covers over my sin. Yes. and covers over every circumstance oh, of my life. Can God. I hear an amen? Love. Yes. The love amen. of Jesus has length. If you want to know how long it is, mm -hmm. ask yourself, when did the love of God, God. Start, start towards me? Yes. And how long will it continue? Yes. The love of Jesus has depth. You cannot go lower than the death of the cross. And that is how deep the love of Jesus is for us. Mm -hmm. Oh, how I wish we had time. I told Pastor Joy we'll sing a song. Are we ready to sing? Love divine, all oh, loves excelling. And we'll sing it in the, in the tune I was taught in high school. Love divine, all oh, loves excelling. Joy of heaven to earth come down. Fix in us. Thy humble dwelling, all oh, thy faithful masses cry. Jesus, thou art all compassion, pure and bound, and love thou art. Visit us with thy salvation, enter every trembling heart. That's how deep how it's a love divine. All loves excelling. Mm -hmm. It's the joy of heaven to earth come down. If you want to see the height of God's love, ask yourself, how high does it lift me? Mm -hmm. It lifts me to heavenly places yes. where I am seated with Christ. Christ. And he says, finish then thy new creation, pure and spotless let us be. Let us see the great salvation, perfectly restored in thee. Change from glory into glory, till in heaven we take our place. Till we cast our crowns before thee, lost in one. Pastor, where did you learn that one? Um, I want us to just sing Upendo wa mungu kweli ni wa ajabu Upendo wa mungu kweli ni wa ajabu Upendo wa mungu kweli ni wa ni wa ajabu Waweza kwenye chini Waweza kwenye chini Waweza Thank you. 
that God is able to do in answer to prayer exceed our measure and description. He does exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or imagine or even imagine. Yes. Paul prayed for spiritual strength. Yes. He prayed for the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. Please hear what I'm saying because I'm going to ask you to pray these things for the neighbor next to you. Paul prayed for spiritual strength. Spiritual strength. He prayed for the indwelling presence indwelling of the presence Holy, Spirit. Of the Holy Spirit. He prayed for an experiential knowledge of God's love. Not knowledge a knowledge in the head, mm -hmm. but a knowledge that is lived out. Yes. And he prayed for the fullness of God to dwell in yes. the saints. Yes. And yes. this is what we are going to pray for. Yes. However, this prayer is received only by the believer. And when we pray it even for others, they receive it. Yes. And he says, this is my life work. Helping people to understand this mystery yes. and respond to the message of God's love. Yes. And it echoes our mission to know God yes. and to make him known. Yes. When the church understands and walks in God's eternal purpose, God will be glorified. And this is our purpose as a church, to understand God's purpose and to propagate mm -hmm. that purpose, yes. to know him and to make him known, so that even the Gentile who is out there can become a partaker of the unsearchable mm -hmm. riches of God that are in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Remember Jesus' words, when you lift me up, mm -hmm. I will draw men to myself. Oh. John 12 and verse 32. Mm -hmm. May our life goal be to lift Jesus up mm -hmm. daily, to make the mystery of the gospel known to all men. Yes. This is why we must eat the scroll and take me territories for Jesus. for Jesus. Come on, hold the hand of your neighbor mm -hmm. and pray for them. Let's pray. But as we go into a new week, there will be evidence upon evidence of your goodness, of your mercy, of your faithfulness upon our lives in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, help us to know who we are in Christ that we may take our position as those who have been redeemed, as those who can stand in the gap and help us to be channels through which the unsearchable riches of Christ can reach those who do not yet know and do not understand. And therefore, may the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift his countenance towards you and give you peace, both now and forevermore. Amen. Share the words of the grace with your neighbor. If they are hungry, you can hug them. If your hands are shakeable, you can shake them. And tell them and love with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Take new territories for Jesus. God and we are praying that God may seed the waters, the rains may stop so that his people can be able to survive. It has been sad, it's sad that people have been dying because of the waters and the rains seem crowding the country. In togetherness we have prayed that the waters may subside so that uh, people may stop dying. So 
we know and we pray that God will do this miracle for us all because he is God. So as we exit the church, we thank God for his mercy. This is uh, uh, the first service which has ended. People are coming in for the second service. People are coming in for the second service and this is how it is here. This is how it is here. So guys, this is Never Age TV. We'll never stop telling you how God, how good God is and how he loves us. Listen to that sermon and may it work miracles in your lives. In Jesus' mighty name. Subscribe to this channel and we'll see you in the next one. You wonder, where is she who is talking? This is, this is me. Never HTV. Please subscribe. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.